Yes, we are the Tessitura Network, and thank you for coming. It is my pleasure and privilege to welcome you to the 2017 Tessitura Learning and Community Conference. San Diego is the only city that we have been back to three times. So I hope that you're enjoying all that this area has to offer the wonderful weather, the many attractions, and this terrific hotel and conference facility. We are thrilled you are here and know that you will gain a great deal professionally from this program-packed five-day gathering. There are 364 Tessitura-powered organizations here at TLCC this year. That is a record. And we now have 591 organizations in the Tessitura network. This is a great representation. The effort that it takes to produce this conference, unique in the arts and cultural sector, for the knowledge that is shared, the insights that are gained across genres, across sectors, and across the world, is enormous. And it's fortunate, as you just saw, that we have a conference team that is up to the task to bring TLCC to life. We are bringing the 250 sessions to you that you asked to have happen. Through the planning committee, those 200 of you that volunteered to be on the planning committee to inform the content. And importantly, we have a global Tessitura network team of 209 talented professionals that bring the tools, the technology, the services, and the knowledge sharing facilitation to each of you and your organizations on a year-round basis. And we have been doing this since 2001. So our entire purpose is to help all of you and your organizations succeed. Yes, the Tessitura Network is advancing the business of arts and culture. The network team that I am so privileged to lead shares a passion and a dedication to each of your missions and your success that is unparalleled, and I am honored to serve with each one of them. This Tessitura Network Company disrupted an industry and changed it forever. The team and I would like to share with you a little bit of our history. There was a time when arts and cultural organizations struggled to connect with their audiences, relying on many disconnected technologies. Then, this guy led the charge to build Tessitura, a unified platform for arts and culture. There was a time when cultural organizations were at the mercy of profit-driven system providers, facing sudden, wrenching problems based on diverted supplier focus, exorbitant fees, and disruptive mergers. Then, the Tessitura Network was formed, a nonprofit company governed by its users, mission-focused on the needs of their organizations and staffed by professionals on three continents, a company 100% focused on the real needs of arts and cultural organizations. And since our founding in 2001, we've grown and grown and grown. We have walked in your shoes. We come from backgrounds at art centers, theaters, symphonies, opera and dance companies, museums and galleries, and technology services companies. In our free time, we are musicians, artists, actors, dancers, hackathoners. We are also veterans, hot sauce makers, roller derby queens, people who have seen the Queen of England, surfers, Chicago Cubs fans, and New Zealand All Blacks fans. And as your team Tessitura, we are technologists, educators, support and hosting specialists, consultants, community collaborators, business and finance experts, and relationship makers. Each and every day, we, the Tessitura Network, are in the business of helping arts and cultural organizations succeed. We are Tessitura. Thank you, thank you. Glad you liked it. We had fun making that. Matter of fact, let's see the team close up. Team Tessitura, would you please stand up? <laughs> and
And thank you to our member of our ecosystem and a sponsor, Cinovative, who produces great videos just like that one. We learned a lot about each other that day. We knew about many of the passions, but a few more surfaced. Who knew that we had roller derby queens and hot sauce makers, in addition to the composers, the actors, the dancers, the geeks, and the Cub fans? <laughs> As a matter of fact, many of the passions of the network team framed aspects of their career choices in arts and cultural organizations. They have lived in your shoes and performed many of your roles. I would venture a guess, just a guess, that a majority of you in this room share a love for the mission and the outcomes that your organizations bring so well to the world. The network team, so well highlighted in that video, lives in your venues and in your cultures whenever they take a time off or an evening out. And I live in your venues also. It's been a highlight of my network journey and free time to support and attend so many performances and cultural experiences at your organizations. I do pay for it, so I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I have a few other passions as well, such passions as grandkids and a great family. Cycling, hiking, skiing, the Cubs, and of course, dogs. But there's one more passion. Possibly, it might seem off the beaten path, but that's where a story begins. For some reason, I always found silos interesting. <laughs> and in studying structure in business school and running companies of various sizes, I became interested in why organizations succeeded and also why they struggled, and how, and how often there were silos involved in aspects of those struggles and how important it is, including in arts and cultural organizations, to work to eliminate them. One of the core capabilities that the network provides and what we do is to help break down those silos. When we chose this year's conference theme, Powering Transformation, I couldn't help but think of how many stories in my visits and in talking with you, I've heard from Tessitura organizations about the transformative power of Tessitura as a silo buster, powering organization-wide collaboration and communication, breaking through departmental barriers, and enabling the ability of the organization to see and communicate with the full knowledge of the patron's history. So we often hear you voice your concerns about being fragmented, and we see your joy as you experience the power of unifying. And I'd like to share some of your voices with you today. Tessitura uh, has helped us and our organization tremendously um, because it's really being able to unite uh, across our departments. Uh, previously, we had separate systems uh, for our inn and restaurant, we had separate systems for our ticketing, we had separate systems for our development and membership. Uh, and really, Tessitura has allowed all of that data to go into one place, and it's in inspired our departments to kind of work across teams. And I think what's really fantastic about having your entire team on Tessitura is the fact that everybody looks at data differently. A test tour allows us to achieve our mission uh, by putting all the data in one place and allowing us to see the, the life cycle of a customer as they go through uh, and, and enjoy our estate. So Tessitura helps us to put the customer first by having all of the data in one place. So the fact that Tessitura has one customer record means that our business has had to change to focus on the customer. Everybody's actually thinking about the same thing for the first time. It's meant that cross-organisationally we've been able to get people together in the room to talk about things that they've never been able to talk about before. Using um, the same system with multiple departments brings us all close together. It helps us achieve our mission by um, having such easy access to customer information. We all connect just because we have the same database. Um, when I started, there were five databases, four databases, um, and now luckily, they're all in one place. And so when our executive director, our marketing director, 
our finance director or the board comes and asks for some data, I can find it, which you can't, couldn't always do. It's just making our company less silo-ish, which I really like. That was great. As it turns out, I'm not the only one interested in the challenges of silos. Different types of scientists, economists, anthropologists, data specialists, business consultants, and even governments focus on the challenges of being siloed in terms of service delivery, strategy, and yes, even survival. I recently picked up a very interesting book. It had business and non-business examples about the challenges of silos, appropriately called the silo effect, by Jillian Tett, who's an award-winning author, U.S. managing editor of Financial Times, and she has a doctorate in anthropology from Cambridge. The challenge is that silos emerge out of a desire for efficiency, to classify our world, seemingly making it easier to manage. Thus, we tend to think that we are being efficient, but we are creating structural silos by that very specialization. Think about it. Marketers market, engineers design, salespeople sell, fundraisers fundraise, and this silo-based organization, perhaps, can result in pockets of information, restricted thinking, suboptimal service, and even business to failure or decline. And escaping the challenges of a silo mentality and the constraints that brings really requires a shift in perspective. So I have a question. How many of you have an iPhone in your pocket? No, don't take it out, turn it on and start <laughs> tweeting or something. So, well, uh, quite a few I would imagine. Well, it's due to silos as well as passionate and focused leadership that iPhones became pervasive. No, not silos at Apple, but silos at Sony. Let's go back in the time machine to 1979. <laughs> Sony brought the world mobile music with their iconic portable music players and sold hundreds of millions of these players. But they ultimately lost the market and much of their value of their company to Apple, who launched a tiny, elegant, portable music device, the iPod, the predecessor to the iPhone. Why did Sony not win? Well, it was due to silos. Sony had the technology. Think PlayStation, think TVs, think all their great electronics. And they actually also controlled much of the content. Sony Music Entertainment was, and still is, one of the biggest music rights holders in the world. But the folks in Sony Music were paid based on their divisional P&L. And they were scared to death terrified that downloaded songs from the internet would cut into their revenue. Thus, the structure and incentives at Sony interfered with company-wide collaboration and innovation. So Sony kept on producing products that didn't work together. At Sony, silos crushed innovation and prevented the company from seeing and seizing one of the opportunities that shaped the world. At Apple, it was very different. Steve Jobs set out with engineers to create a human-focused digital music experience, and Apple disrupted an industry. There was one P&L for the whole company, and of course, there was innovation in user experience, design, and business model. Apple brainstormed ideas across product categories, combated privacy concerns, and created both new technology and a new artist fee-sharing model. And the iPod, 400 million of them since 2001, led to the iPhone and where we are today. In 2016, Tim Cook announced that the company had sold its one billionth iPhone. Amazing. Apple had focus and did not let structure define or constrain set strategy. And Sony, they're still making great PlayStations. We may not intuitively walk around thinking about silos, but we encounter them all the time. In companies where one department doesn't talk to another department, where teams hoard information, 
and the problems of silos interfere greatly with customer service. So I can see some wheels turning, even in this big room, even at 6.30 at night before dinner, with the bright lights. But per so perhaps one more industry example that has service implications before we come back to the world of arts and culture. This time the example is in healthcare, and the Cleveland Clinic comes to mind. The Cleveland Clinic was founded in 1921. They were known as being world class for the specialties that they treat. But it turns out that by being specialized, their service suffered for their clients, the patients, those that needed the care. And it took a new leader, Dr. Corby Cosgrove, a noted heart surgeon. He was named CEO, and he realized that segmentation in healthcare did not benefit the patients. So he forced the organizations to rethink medicine in a fundamental sense and questioned the very foundation of doctor specialist silos. So instead of roles being defined in medical terms, the staff changed their roles to caregivers and defined a multidisciplinary approach that forced surgeons and physicians and the other professionals to work together to treat patients holistically. They created a chief experience officer and attended courses in empathy and store service. And what was interesting, in the course of doing so, they realized that it was the process of realigning the organization and building new systems and tackling it as a team that transformed them. They became the top rated institution in patient satisfaction across many of the fields of care that they provided. So I pose a few questions. How many of you feel too siloed? How many of you, yeah, we see some hands, <laughs> brave souls. How many of you even recognize that silos exist? And how many of you are doing something about it? <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> so how many of your organizations, last question, have reviewed your structure to improve your collaboration and your service? This is a turned on group. <laughs> we know, we knew and we know that many of you are working to improve and we are pleased to be part of that evaluation and your evolution. The Tessitura system itself, since day one, provides one holistic data source for the organization that all departments use. This is a major unifying element and it is the trigger for change. Actually, the system is only one part. Many of you have said, like the Cleveland Clinic found out, that it was the process of implementing a unified system that starts the conversation and becomes the catalyst for organizational transformation. So let's hear from a few more of you about those transformations. The thing that drove us to Tessitura to begin with is the integration of the entire organization. Uh, prior to Tessitura, we were with a product where there was a separate product for development and a separate product for the ticketing side. Um, and the analysis and the analytics that can be done through the combined database um, of donors and patrons has been incredible for us. So the biggest thing that for us has been really beneficial is bringing the 34 departments into one room to talk and to discuss what we do. And that is going to, by itself, be a huge success. We've cha changed a lot of our business processes. Members are noticing the difference. The staff has noticed the difference, especially the frontline staff. Our organization has really developed over time to be one that is far more representing cross-departmental. We're able to cross-departmentally discuss different things that we're doing on a regular basis. At Black Country Living Museum, we uh, originally had five different systems across the organization that didn't talk to each other, which wasn't particularly helpful um, when we were trying to mine information and find out who our customers and our visitors were. Now we have it, it's brought the teams together so much, and actually we wanted one integrated system, but we've actually got one integrated team now. I love that. We have one integrated team now.
So yes, technology can help break barriers down. We live in a world that's hyper-connected, yet sometimes we don't focus on what's, next, what's, what's right next to us. When the network can help make an impact, we are gratified and proud. So thank you to the many of you that shared those insights with us. And yes, we can make each one of you famous if you'll stop by the Success Studio <laughs> right outside the doors here of Seaport sometime this week. It just takes a few moments and a few sound bites. So do we have a magic bullet? No, we don't. But we provide the operational capability and the platform and the services to transform. And we can be the catalyst as we have just seen. Mastering silos is probably not a task that's ever done. It's an ongoing work in progress that organizations work on continually. And to il illustrate that, I went recently with Laura Bowden and Anna Wesley Last year, it was the 15th year of our company and the 15th year since license holder number one went live, the Santa Fe Opera. So it was their Tessaversary. We, we, took some, we took some tasty cupcakes and those were great, but it was great to hear how they continue 15 years later to meet monthly and share organizational challenges and opportunities and also and talk about how they can meet those challenges and opportunities and how Tessitura can help them stay focused, keep them as an organization and their data aligned and provide the fantastic service that they provide. As I said, there's no magic answer, but there are a few high level themes to fight off silo mentality that we can think about. First, question the status quo. Encourage people to call out blockers. Business as usual is not always business well done. Next, keep boundaries of teams flexible and fluid. Even rotating staff between departments helps. No more my department versus your department. Think about pay and incentives. When people are rewarded primarily on the basis of only how they perform or their department performs versus the company as a whole, perhaps they're less likely to collaborate. Next, of course, unified information is vital and access for all is critical. When people or departments hoard or hog information, there are huge risks and problems, and Tessitura can obviously definitely help there. And lastly, try to reimagine and rethink your taxonomies, your classification, and even your structure. Experiment with alternatives. Matter of fact, we're seeing a lot of titles changing. We're seeing more organizations with cross-organization titles. Things like Chief Revenue Officer, Vice President of Institutional Advancement, and like the Cleveland Clinic, Chief Experience Officer. Someone focused on the entire journey across the organization, and there are many titles like this in the room now. So yes, silo busting is vital to powering transformation. Sony failed to question their silos and missed the biggest opportunity they could have had. Cleveland Clinic flipped their mental map to visualize the world around patient experiences rather than how doctors were classified, and they became service leaders. We live in a world with specialization being expected, but we also live in a world that is fast-paced and changing. So I challenge you to rethink if there are new ways to deliver your missions and perhaps reclassify structure or operations. In other words, reimagine how to win. And in the process, hopefully be transformed. Each of your organizations makes the world a better place with the arts and culture that you bring to it and the enrichment to humankind that you provide. We live our mission at the Tessitura Network to help you fulfill your missions, and we will help you break down silos to improve. So take advantage of this week. This conference is unique. You'll be learning, collaborating, networking with peers from different departments, different genres, and different continents. Think about what blocks collaboration, blocks ideas, blocks innovation in your organization. Use your time this week to gain insights, open up opportunities, and interact with the best and brightest in arts and culture from around the world. We are so pleased to be here to share your journey, play a role in your success, and work with you 
to continually power positive transformations. Thank you.